Okay, this is a very short video on how to make an S3 public bucket in 2022 because things have changed a little bit, but it's still fairly easy to do with just one extra step. After I explain this, I'm going to really quickly show you how to convert it into a static web host. So the first thing we need to do is create a bucket. I'm doing this for my home region. Name your bucket whatever you want. I'm going to call mine sample bucket. I'm just going to add a number here that's going to be globally unique. Now here's what's changed. First part is you have to enable ACLs, that's access control lists. And the reason you need to enable them is because we're going to disable them in a second in an itemized way. But what they want you to do is enable permissions through IAM policies now, not through ACLs. And then as always, on block all public access. And now you have to acknowledge that. And that's it for this screen. Go ahead and create the bucket. And then after this is created, we're gonna go into the permission screen. Okay, the fastest way to find my new bucket is go over here to creation date. So I get my newest created bucket and it's right here. Now I'm gonna to go to the permission screen, as I said, and we're gonna make a few changes here. This is all okay, but I gotta add a bucket policy. So go ahead and hit edit. And I'm gonna give you this bucket policy, but just so you can find it yourself, it's the same thing as the one right here. If you go to policies examples, scroll down here to the second one, grant read-only permission to anonymous user, click that, copy that, go back to your bucket. And all I'm gonna do is just paste it right in, control V. And then the only thing you need to change here is you need to grab the name of your bucket and copy and paste that. So I'm gonna copy that, and you'll need to paste it right here where it says doc example bucket, that's the fake template name holder. There we go, and if I've done everything correctly, I can save those changes. Excellent. Now you gotta scroll down further now that that's in there and you put in your own bucket name right there, forward slash asterisk for all objects within that bucket. And now you have to go back to the ACL, the access control list, hit edit, and go ahead and check these two boxes. So you're gonna give everyone access to read. They still can't write to your bucket, but now they can read into your bucket. And that's gonna be necessary. Of course, you can do this all with CloudFront and Route 53 and pay extra money for it. But if no one knows your bucket name, this is just a better way to keep it as a free pennies a month open bucket. Save those changes. And we have to do one last thing is we have to set our course policy. Because if you don't set your course policy, you're going to get a mixed access origin headers alert because you don't have the correct headers that are accessible cross domain. So go ahead and use mine and I'll give you a link to this as well or put it in the description. And this is fine. It used to be an XML and now it's in JSON. So there's a lot of legacy issues, but this is now the JSON policy that'll authorize those cross origin headers. Go ahead and save that. And now you have a completely open bucket that you can save and you have a static IP where you can access this bucket worldwide. Now I'm gonna make one extra change if you wanna make this a static web host. You just keep everything like it is. You just have to make one small change. You would go to properties, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and it's gonna ask you right here, hey, do you wanna make this a static web host? Sure, edit this. Enable static web hosting. And from here, you can name it whatever you want. The minimum that you're going to need is to have a landing page. I'll call mine index HTML, like 90% of everybody else does. And go ahead and save that. And if you have an index HTML and a JavaScript, all you would need to do at that point is go back here to objects and upload your HTML index page and your JavaScript file. And now you have a static web host and an open public bucket. So not only can I host a static website with a static IP for almost no money for the whole year, maybe a few pennies, I can use this as a data storage bucket. So I have IoT Core going to Lambda or any other service pushing a data lake into this bucket or single data objects. It's now usable for both of those things. Okay, I hope that was helpful.